Welcome at E2E Designs. It's time for another reaction and I found an Indonesian guy who paints cycles as I do. I hope I can spell it right. His name is Tukang Amplas and what he did is he painted a tracker mamba in the marble style. So let's watch his video and let's find out how it's done. Yeah, it looks like a brand new factory painted frame. Maybe it's from a client, I'm not sure. Maybe he's a professional painter as well. Oh, he does some hand sanding. Not bad. Oh, stop, 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 stop. We have to go back. That's not what I like to see. Oh, check this. He didn't remove the decals. That's not good. That's a lazy guy. If you don't remove the decals, you have a high risk that they can bubble because they are screen printed. Decals are no color. And yeah, if you don't remove the decals, you have a risk of a fail. I would do it. I would remove the decals as a minimum. Maybe the complete paint job. That's what I would do. And there are several things which I also wouldn't do. Check the radio hanger and these derailleur hangers are anodized, they are not painted and when you paint over the anodizing the color won't stick. I wouldn't do that. And what he also does, he painted uh, the mounts for the, for the brakes, for the disc brakes. That's a safety risk. And check factory frames. These areas are never painted. They are pure carbon and there's a reason for that. And if you paint these areas you can't mount the brakes uh, tight enough and they can't get loose. Maybe, maybe not. So that's a safety risk. I wouldn't do it. I would mask these areas, the brake mounts, and I would remove the derailleur hanger as well. <laughs> and another thing, check the head badge. Yeah, it's still on and that's only a sticker. I would remove it. That's only laziness. If you don't remove a head badge, a sticker, that's laziness pure. It's so easy. Just use a knife and peel it off. And when you're done with your paint job, you can stick it on. That's what I would do. Yeah, masking the holes for the bottle cages with screws is a good idea. I'm using uh, stickers for doing that, but you can use also screws like he did. What I don't understand is, he used a white primer, a light gray primer, and now he uses black. And yeah, that's not what I would do, because you apply much too much color when you do that. He should use a black primer, that saves a lot of color and a lot of weight on these frames. If you use a light primer, you should use a light color as well. And if you want to do a black like he did, it's also a good idea to use a black primer as well. That's a silver and I think he uses um, solvent paints because that's typical for Indonesian paint jobs. It doesn't look like a water base. <laughs> Check this. He doesn't wear any gloves. He sprays direct in his hand and <laughs> yeah. He has painted fingernails and a complete painted hand when he does that. And I'm not really sure what I should think about it. Safety first. So wear personal safety gear. And if you do a paint job like this, where you have something in your hand and you like to spray color, wear a glove. That's much safer because these colors are not good for your skin. They can dry out your skin. And yeah, if you are young, it's not a problem. But if you get old, it can be a problem. And that's how you do the marble style. 
You can use cling foil or you can use a plastic bag like this. Yeah, but check this. He uses the plastic bag over and over again. And yeah, what he does is he has every time the same pattern of the plastic on different areas on the frame. And yeah, I'm a perfectionist and I would identify these patterns, the same patterns on the frame. So it's a much better idea if you use cling foil and for every area of the frame, use a new cling foil so you have different patterns on the frame and not the same in different spots. That's what I would do. Yeah, check this. It's every time the same pattern. He turns us 45 degrees, but it's every time nearly the same. So I would use minimum maybe three or four bags if you like to do the plastic bag style. Yeah, can you see that? Check the down tube. It's nearly the same uh, pattern in the same stripes. The stripes have the same direction because he uses only one plastic bag. And that's what I mean. If you like to avoid that, use different plastic bags, maybe three, and you have more variation in the pattern. Yeah, here you can see the head badge and there's no pattern around the head badge because the plastic bag couldn't transfer the color in these edges. And that's what I mean. If you don't remove these head badges, you are a lazy guy. It's so easy. Just use a knife. And the only thing you have to do is sharp knife, stick it behind these badges and peel them off and you can stick them on when the paint job's done. It's much more professional than masking them. That's what I do. Maybe I'm too perfect, I'm a, a much more perfectionist and others think it's not a problem to let them on during the painting process. But I'm also removing original paint jobs before I start a new one. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I think. That's my personal opinion about it. And yeah, if you want an advice, just remove them. The next step is a candy red. It's a transparent color. And you can see the silver shining through the color and that gives a special effect and a lot of depth on the color when you add clear coat. And it seems that he's using a minigun. Oh, that was very fast. So he's already doing the logotyping and the decals and he applied a mask. I would do more masking tape around the decal because there's a risk of overspray on the head tube, also on the bottom bracket. Check the areas on the head tube and on the bottom bracket. There's a high risk that there's overspray when you mask only a small area like this. And he applies a lot of color in the first step. That's also a risk that the color leaks underneath the masking tape if it doesn't stick well. So I would do thin layers, maybe three to four, not a big layer like this. It's much too wet for me. And that's what I can tell about it. Maybe it goes, uh, it, it works. And yeah, if you're not a lucky guy, you have a lot of color leaking underneath the masking. Looks like an effect color on top. Now let's check what happens. Huh. Can you see these edges? Look at the K, at the edge of the K. He applied a lot of color, two layers, uh, uh, black and also this effect color. And the edge of the K is not 100% sharp. You can see it and yeah, that's a risk that you have no sharp edges if you apply too much color or if you use only one stencil for different colors. He 
same here. Check the stencil and check the bubble between the E and the K on the track logo. Can you see this bubble on the top of the E? And yeah, that's a spot where color can leak underneath the masking if you apply too much color. And that is what can happen. So what I would do is I would apply much thinner layers, not big like this. Yeah, he's using a two-component clear card. That's a two-component system. And the factory is thickens. That's not bad. That's high quality, high quality stuff. A high solid. And yeah, that is what professionals use. Not, not a bad choice. That's also what I would use. That's the hardener. And the mixing ratio of these clear coats is two to one, two parts of the clear coat, one part of the hardener. He added also some thinner and yeah, sometimes it's a good idea to add some thinner if you have a thick clear coat, but if you add too much, there's also a risk of paint runs. So the mixing ratio of the clear coat is very important if you do it wrong. You have orange peel or a lot of paint runs. So you need a lot of experience to mix the clear coat for a high quality paint job. Oh, 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 and he's using no filter. He uses no sieve. He puts the clear coat direct in the spray gun. And that's also a bad idea because sometimes there's dust in these cans or you have little, um, the hardener can harden inside the can and then you have these little chips inside the hardener and if you use no stiff, you have a risk that your paint job has a lot of fails or a lot of dust in the paint job or these, um, in Germany we say stones, Steine, stones in the, in the paint job, in the clear coat and that's caused uh, if you use no stiff like he does and I would filter the clear coat before I would put it in my spray gun. Yeah, wet sanding of the clear coat gives, uh, gives a high quality and sanding these decals is necessary because there's a gap in between these decals. So if you apply a two color decal like he did, black and silver or this effect color, you have to sand that flat, you have to flatten the gap in between the decal and the frame color and that is what he did. Oh, stop, stop, stop again. Check the frame. Check his frame. He sanded also only the decals, not the complete frame. And that's not what a professional would do because you have a risk that the next layer of clear coat will peel off and that there's no bond in between these two layers. That's a high risk. I wouldn't do it because if you have a client which likes to, or who likes to apply one of these protection foils on the frame that there's a risk that, will he, that he will peel off or she will peel off the first layer of clear coat because there's no bond in between the first and the second layer of clear coat. If you don't do the sanding, that's what I wouldn't recommend. And yeah, that's only laziness. I would sand the complete frame for absolutely high quality and that is what he should do as well. Yeah, what he's doing now is polishing the frame. Sometimes you have dust in the paint job and you can remove the dust by hand sanding and polishing the frame. And he polishes also all the decals because there's a gap in between these decals and the frame color. Even if you apply two layers of the clear coat and to remove the gap, you can sand again and flatten these areas again. And then you can do a polish and 
what you have to do is you have to use a, a 2000 grit or 3000 grit to sand the frame and then you can do a polish with a polishing machine or you can also polish by hand. And what you need is a good polishing compound. And yeah, I will link you some stuff underneath the video in the description if you are interested what to use to polish frames and to paint frames. And that is what he is doing. Maybe you have seen it. He uses wet sanding paper, maybe 3000 grit. And he sands these areas with the decals and now he polishes it. Yeah, let's check the quality of the decals. And it's a little bit rough on the edges. Maybe you can see it on the E of the track. There are some areas, maybe I can show it to you. Check this, check this, check this gap. And here it's a little bit rough. Here it's a little bit rough. Um, that's caused maybe by a bad sign maker or by too much color on the stencils. But the color is very nice. There's a lot of depth in the color. And the candy is perfect. Also the clear coat. Nice and polished. Yeah, let's check the head badge. And that's what I mean. Check this area here. That's not 100% perfect. Because if you remove the masking, there's every time a little gap in between the color and the head badge. And that's the reason why I remove them first. But the color is very nice and the depth of the clear coat is perfect. Ah, I've seen some orange peel. Let's go back a little bit. Here, here you can see it. There's the orange peel. That's the area with the orange peel. Can you see that? The reflection is not 100% perfect. Here you can see it. That's a straight line. And the frame is absolutely perfect. The clear coat is polished, but not in this area. It's a little bit rough. And that is orange peel. But all in all, it's very good. The quality is very good. Good painted, but check the derailleur hanger. And as mentioned before, I would remove it because if you mount the derailleur, the color will, will flake and it will peel off in this area and it doesn't look good. So if you like to go pro, remove it, remove the rivets, remove the derailleur hanger and mount it when you've done painting the frame. That's what I do. It looks much more factory-like because uh, as you have seen, this was black before he painted it and that's what it should be when you are done. And yeah, when you paint this area, the color won't stick, doesn't matter what you are using. And yeah, to improve the quality, that's what I do. Yeah, can you see that? He painted also inside <coughs> the C-tube. You can see it here. Check where my mouse is. And that's also a problem because um, maybe not on this frame, but if you have a frame where you like to uh, insert a seat post, the C-tube can be too tight because there's color inside the C-tube. And to avoid that, you have to mask this area so that there is no color uh, sticking inside these tubes and uh, yeah that can be an issue if you have a frame where you have to insert a seat tube here again can you see that these sockets are painted here you can see it so please 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 don't paint the sockets for the brake mounts it's a safety risk if you paint them the brakes won't fit well and it's a risk that they can get loose and factory frames are never painted in these areas. They are masked and that's what I recommend. So please mask these areas. That's a safety risk and a factory frame is never, never, never painted in these areas. I mask these areas every time. So take your five minutes and please do the masking of the sockets for the brakes. Check the UCI label. 
the masking was not 100% perfect. You can see it here. There's no white line. Check this area. And maybe a sign maker, a sign maker is not the best and he's not able to cut a sign in the exact size of this label. And yeah, that makes the difference to high quality and absolutely high quality. Yeah, check the Sega Fredo. It's not 100% perfect. I think that's the quality of a sign maker. Check the Sanetti. And yeah, these letters look very bubbly. And if you have a cheap sign maker, maybe 300 to 500 bucks, that's the result. You can't do these small letters. You need a high quality sign maker to do small letters. And yeah, that's the result. If you save, <clears throat> in your equipment. I spend a lot of money in my sign maker. It costs me more than 2,000 euro and yeah, I'm able to do the smallest letters and I can do it again and again. I can repeat them. I can mask them again if I have to do different colors and it's absolutely perfect every time. So that's the choice if you want to go pro or if you want to go absolutely pro. And yeah, here you can see the difference. Just check the Sanetti again and you can see what I mean. These little letters are bubbly. Also the Sega Fredo. Check the G in this area and that makes the difference of a perfectionist or only a cycle painter. Yeah, that's it. All in all, an absolutely good paint job. I love it. He spent a lot of uh, hours in this paint job. He did a lot of things right. I have also things to improve, like all these things I told you. Don't paint the mounts for the brakes and use a good sign maker if you want to improve your quality and sand the complete frame if you do a second layer of clear coat. That improves the quality a lot. Uh, imagine you have a client who uses these protection foils and he removes the first layer of clear coat. He will hate you, so spend an hour more to send the complete frame. That's it. I like his video. Check out his channel. I will link it under, underneath mine. And yeah, see you in one of my next painting videos. And thanks for watching. Goodbye.